okay what is covariance covariance measures how two variables are moving with respect to each other okay so it is uh, what you can say is a product of the so here it will be like a product of the difference between the variable and the expected value of the two different variables and you are taking the expected value of that so it is a kind of measure okay, as to how the movement is happening of two different uh, variable two different random variable because what happens in the market you will you will find that let's take an example of let's say tcs stock and you have a example of wipro stock so you will find that many times you are interested in finding out how this uh, move together because the return of TCS and the return of Wipro are not independent. Okay? There is some type of dependency between these returns and please note that when we had said that variance of X plus Y is equal to variance of X plus variance of Y only for independent random variable. Okay? However, when the random variables are not independent, okay, that means there is some relationship between these two variables. So that is being measured by covariance. So covariance measures the relationship of two independent variables and the formula for covariance is given as this. It is expected value of the product of the difference of the number, the mean of the two variables. So let's see what are the properties of covariance. So the properties of covariance is covariance value range from minus infinity to plus infinity because these are the two products so variance cannot be positive negative so variance is always greater than or equal to zero but a covariance can be negative okay the covariance of a variable with itself is variance of x so if you think over here you want to find out the covariance of a number x with itself so covariance of x with it itself i want so i will put x minus expected value of x and then instead of y I will again put x because I am interested so if you see this is nothing but expected value of x minus ex whole square you are computing so and that is the formula for variance of x so the covariance of a variable with itself is variance of x okay if there is no relationship between the asset then the covariance is zero if the two asset there is no correlation no way, uh, relationship then the covariance will be zero okay and the unit of covariance is squared unit similar to the variance okay if let's say we are talking in terms of percentage okay if we are talking from the percentage point of view the unit of covariance will be percentage square the same unit is there for the variance also okay now there are some more properties okay covariance of a plus bx c plus dy okay so if you want to find out the covariance of a plus bx c plus dy okay it is written as okay so what you have is x and y are random variable a b c d are constant okay so what you have is okay, it will be i'm sorry i think i have done mistake over here okay it should be b into d it should be b into d so b into d into covariance of x y okay so if you have like this so it will be b into d covariance of x y okay now what you have is this is like more important okay when you have remember like when you said that in variance between the independent variables variance of x plus y is variance of x plus variance of y plus two times so this was the case when you had independent variables however when the variables are not independent you have to add two times covariance of x y okay now this is when the variables are not independent the covariance term comes okay when the variance when the variables are independent as you know that covariance is zero so this will become zero so variance of x plus y is variance of x plus variance of y okay so this when they are not independent you will be seeing this equation okay one drawback is you will not be able to find out the strength of relationship so let's say between a and b the covariance is 500 and between c and d the covariance is let's say 1000 you are not able to tell which has a higher uh, strength of relationship whose uh, variability which whose uh, relationship or whose variability within with the respect to the other variable is more so we will see in the next class that we have a concept of correlation which covers this concept 
then uh, there is one more concept that we have to cover is that is what is skewness and kurtosis so what we have is we have skewness measures the how the data is placed with respect to the mean okay so what we have is when we have this as a mean okay and typically what happens is we have mean median and mode are the same so we say that the data point are symmetrical okay that is data the distribution is symmetrical however many times you will find that okay the data is skewed either to the right or either to the left okay when the data point is skewed to the right okay that means what has happened is there are some extreme values which are present okay and they are causing the mean to shift to the right so what you have is this is a symmetric distribution where mean median and mode is same okay however you have a distribution which is positive skewed it means that there are some extreme values to the right okay what that extreme value is doing is that extreme value is pulling the mean towards its side okay when it is ex pulling the mean towards its side you will see that okay the mean gets dragged okay so the mean median and mode was over here the mean gets dragged to the right and you will see this type of distribution mean is coming so in this case of positive skew distribution you will find that mean is greater than median which in turn is greater than mode so positive skew distribution are skewed to the right so positive skew distribution are also called as right skew distribution okay negative skew distribution where in other hand what happens is you have some extreme values to the left side okay so negative skew distribution are also called as left skew distribution okay the property of negative skew distribution is it pulls the mean towards the left side so you have mean is less than median is less than mode okay now what is mode mode is that number which is occurring the highest number of times so if you see mode is that number which is occurring the highest number of times so that means if you have over here frequency these are all your probability density function so you have frequency and these are the numbers x over here so mode has the highest frequency mode remains the same but what happens is mean gets dragged so mean gets dragged so please note that mode is greater than mid sorry mode is less than median is less than mean over here what happens is I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry over here so mode mean is more yeah mean is more than median which is more than the mode okay here what happens is mean is less than the median and less than the mode so what happens is mean is least median is more than that mode is again the highest here mode is the lowest mode is the lowest mean is the highest so skewness it measures how symmetric is the distribution okay when the distribution is symmetric the skewness value is zero okay for a negative skew distribution skewness is negative less than zero for a positive skew distribution it is greater than zero okay please note that we don't have to care about the formula for skewness okay just remember that skewness is measured at as summation of xi minus expected value whole cube so pi xi minus expected value whole cube so it is measured as a third moment this is called as third moment so skewness is third moment since it is cube you can have both positive as well as negative okay now some distribution what happens are they are they can be symmetric but what happens is you will be having a normal distribution okay so let us cover this concept of kurtosis okay with respect to a distribution which is a normal distribution so we, that time like we did not cover the normal distribution so let us try to cover this concept of normal distribution and understand that what is a normal distribution normal distribution is a one type of distribution okay, which has certain characteristics so you will see that a normal distribution is represented as a bell shaped distribution it ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity okay and it has certain peakness so this is the peakness in case of normal distribution mode which is this is same as the median which is same as the mean so the normal distribution is symmetrical in nature okay now what happens is there are some distribution which can be more peak than the normal distribution so some distribution can be higher peak than the normal distribution 
whereas some distributions can be lesser peak than the normal distribution. You can have some distribution which are like this. Okay. Now the peakness, the peakness or rather better I would uh, take a different different uh, color. Okay. So let's consider a normal distribution which is this. Okay. Let's consider a distribution which is more peak than the normal distribution which is this. Okay. And let's consider a normal uh, distribution which is so before like let, let's cover this okay so this is uh, considered as a distribution which is more peaked so when you have more peak than the normal distribution it is called as leptocurtic okay now what happens is more peak distributions are also called as fat tail distribution that means if you see the tail is fatter okay that means the if you have like we have said that the, in the y axis you have frequency this has a more frequency than the normal distribution. As a result, if you are interested in finding out the probability beyond a certain item x, certain number x, what happens is, as per the normal distribution, you would assume the frequent, the probability to be only this much. But in reality, the probability is happening how much? The probability is this. Okay. So what happens is, the probability is more in leptocurtic, the probability is more than normal distribution. Okay. So where? In the tails. In the tails, the probability is more than the normal distribution and that is the risk because you might expect the probability to be only 0 0.02 and it might turn out the probability to be 0 0.04. So there is a more risk of getting returns which are below a certain value. Okay. And also what happens is in case of this leptocurtic distribution, you have more frequency which are near the mean. So if you see near the mean, you take two values. Okay. So the near the mean, the frequency, the probability is this. Okay. And in case of normal distribution, the probability would have been only. So in case of normal distribution, the probability would have been only. So till here. The probability would only be this. So what we have is in case of leptocurtic, what we have is probability is higher where near the mean and also probability is higher away from the mean. So probability is higher away from the mean, probability is higher near the mean. Okay. So leptocurtic distribution has more peakness than the normal distribution. So whatever I am specifying, leptocurtic is more peak than the normal distribution. Leptocurtic distribution has uh, more peakness, has more probability away from the mean, has more probability near the mean. Okay. And the courtesy, so there is a one more thing which we have to remember that courtesy. So this topic is courtesy. Courtesy is the peakness relative to the normal distribution. Courtesy for a leptocurtic distribution is greater than 3. So for a leptocurtic distribution the courtesis is greater than 3. Okay. And for a normal distribution the courtesis is any idea? For a normal distribution courtesis is 3. For a leptocurtic distribution courtesis is greater than 3. Okay. Just remember this guys. Okay. And what we have is for a distribution okay, we have also a term called as excess courtesies. Okay. Excess courtesies is equal to the courtesies minus 3, where 3 is the courtesies of a normal distribution. So excess courtesies is given as courtesies minus 3. Okay. So I will give some example over here. Please pay attention. Okay. So think about a leptocurtic distribution. So for a leptocurtic distribution, the courtesis is greater than 3. So let's say the courtesis for a leptocurtic distribution is 5. Okay. Now in examination, if they ask you what is the excess courtesis? What is the excess courtesis? It will be 5 minus 3 or excess courtesis will be 2. Okay. There is another type of distribution which is called as platycurtic. We don't have to worry too much about the platycurtic distribution. Okay. Platycurtic distribution, just think about it is less peaked. Okay. When it is less peaked, its courtesis is less than 3. Okay. So it's less than 3. One more thing about the courtesis, 
Kurtosis is calculated like this. Okay, you don't have to remember the formula. It is summation of xi minus expected value to the power 4 and then there are some other like standard deviation to the power 4 also but this is xi minus ex to the power 4 so as a result it is always kurtosis is always a positive similar to variance it is always positive so for a platycurtic distribution what you have is kurtosis is positive okay but it is less than 3 okay what can be said about excess kurtosis excess kurtosis let's say you have a platycurtic distribution whose kurtosis is 2 so excess kurtosis will be 2 minus 3 please note that excess kurtosis is always given as kurtosis minus 3 so the formula for excess kurtosis is kurtosis minus 3 for here excess kurtosis is 2 that is a kurtosis of this minus 3 so excess kurtosis will become minus 1 now this is how you will find that a kurtosis for an uh, platycurtic will be shown like this. So platycurtic distribution is like this. So platycurtic distributions are flatter, less peak than the normal distribution. Okay. So what you have is whenever you have kurtosis, okay, which is not equal to three, it is not a normal distribution. We assume that the distributions are normal for our returns. Okay, distribution are normal for returns. Okay. Whenever the distributions are not normal and the kurtosis is not equal to 3, that means there is a risk. Okay. We will see in detail when we are as we progress this topic, we will be seeing what are the risks, how we understand estimate it. Okay. So this is kurtosis leptocurtic more peaked. Okay. Now, yes, one more thing is normal distribution is called as mesocurtic distribution. So normal cutic is called as mesocurtic. Platycurtic is Kurtosis less than 3, mesocurtic kurtosis equal to 3, leptocurtic greater than 3. If you are thinking from the excess kurtosis point of view, so if you want excess kurtosis, it will be excess kurtosis greater than 0, excess kurtosis equal to 0, so we will put excess kurtosis, excess kurtosis equal to 0, here excess kurtosis will be less than 0. But please note that kurtosis will always be positive, always be greater than equal to 0. So this covers our skewness and kurtosis. Okay. Now we have one concept which is related to uh, distribution okay, which we are saying as univariate. Okay. So the distributions can be what we have is like call as univariate distribution and multivariate. Okay. Till now whatever distribution we have covered were univariate distribution. Okay. When you try to do a probability distribution of a single random variable so when you are trying to plot a probability distribution for a random variable x, single random variable, the distribution you get is a univariate. Uni means one variable. So one random variable univariate distribution. Okay. However, many times like let's say you want, let's say you have a portfolio. Okay. Think about a portfolio of three stocks, x, y and z. Okay. And when you distribute the returns of this portfolio or probability of the returns, it is not a single variate, it is a multivariate. So you have three variables x, y and z. However, there is, we have seen that there is a, uh, we can find out the standard deviation of the portfolio, okay, all those things. But what we have is when you have probability distribution of a group of random variable, okay, so the distribution that you will be getting is you will be getting a multivariate distribution. Okay, so this is like multivariate distribution. However, what we do is we assume that the stocks follow normal distribution. So the stocks follow normal distribution. So what we see is the portfolio distribution you will be seeing a multivariate normal distribution. Okay. And for multivariate normal distribution we have like a peculiar characteristics properties we will be seeing it later. Okay. Now you can also have the distributions what we call as joint distribution or joint probability function. Okay. So what we have is the so joint distribution or joint probability functions, what, how it is being represented is, this is being represented using a joint probability table. What you have is, you have probability of y, a random variable, you have prob so you have, uh, sorry, x, values of x, you have values of y, and here you will be having certain numbers where it will be the probability of x and y. So here you will be having numbers which is the probability of x and y. So you have a joint probability table. Okay. So, how we put it, so one example of joint probability table I can give over here is, think about, okay, you have a table, 
okay wherein you are saying that over here the, you are put, putting y so let me again uh, let us try to make a table over here so think about we are making a table and we are saying that here we are uh, dealing with the return of y here we are dealing with the return of x okay again like you will see I, in my cfa class i have given more detail okay let's say return of y is 10 percent okay return of y is 20 percent return of y is 30 percent okay and you have over here you are saying that return of x is 5 percent return of x is 7 percent return of x is 9 percent let's say you have this okay and what you will be doing is you will be putting I'm sorry okay. Okay. what you will be doing is you will be putting some proper probability values over here so you'll be putting some probability values over here and what you have is let's say I put a probability value over here as let's say the probability value over here is 0.2 okay what this 0.2 means that the probability that x will be 5% and y will be 20% is 0.2 okay and what you will find is the summation so this in this joint probability function what you will be having is you will be having the probability values maybe this is 0.1 okay and let's say this is 0.05 okay so what it means that the probability that return of x is 5% return of y is 30% is 0.05 and if you take the sum of this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, it comes as 0 0.35. So what this 0 0.35 means that the probability that the return of x is 5%. Okay. If you take the summation of this, you will be getting the probability of return that y is 10%. Okay. However, this value is giving the probability that x is some number 5% and y is some number 20%. So this is how you are representing. If you see this joint probability function, what you are saying is what is the probability that x is taking some value what is the probability that y is taking some value and we denote it as fxy so fxy is the value that you are seeing in the cell so in the cell whatever value you are getting is this fxy so what we have is if you are taking this fxy so we can say that a summation of these values will be equal to 1 okay and since fxy is kind of a measurement of the probability we can say that it is positive Okay, so that is a joint distribution. Okay, so you can have a joint distribution of one or more uh, variable okay, and which is represented by joint probability function.